Welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to make a quick video showing you how to make a leather Kydex hybrid inside the waistband holster. I made a video on making one of these once before, just a quick version. Today I'm going to go more in depth on finishing the leather, going ahead and finishing the leather edges and just making it a little nicer holster than the first one. So if you so, haven't seen my other videos in this whole series, I'm going to link the playlist right up over here, I think. Anyways, that'll be popping up and it'll be in the description below. You can check out the whole series on it. I've got several videos on it and there's still several more to come. So if you enjoy this, make sure you hit that subscribe button and leave any questions in the comments below. And I'll put links in the description to all the products used and most of the tools you need and everything you need in the description below. And I'll put a Okay, for this holster, I happen to have a piece of Kydex that's already cut six inches by six inches, basically, just a scrap I had. But if not, it comes like this, different sizes. This is a 12 by 12 sheet. I went over my other video how to cut it, but you basically just take a utility knife and a straight edge and scribe it about three times and then just bend and break it and it cuts real simple. But I already have one cut, so we're not gonna go over that again. Let's take this, we only need one side for this. You can see it's going to be basically, that's what the Kydex is going to look like when it's molded. So I'll set it on here. And this is going to be right handed. So we'll set it on here this direction. Get it just how far up we want it to come. Go ahead and take the white pencil and just draw a line. Kind of an outline of the gun. Doesn't have to be perfect just so we get it. That's so after we've heated it and set it on the press, we get it in the right spot. It's pretty self-explanatory. All right, so now that we've got this mark like we want, we're just gonna set it to the side for a minute. Get the gun up here, and I'll show you how I mask it real quick. I just went to Hobby Lobby and got several little blocks of random little blocks. And they come in a bag like this, and there's just all kinds of little blocks of stuff. And I just pick whatever works best for what I'm doing at the time. And I've cut some of these to make different shapes and such, but basically, I'm gonna put something in the injection port. And on this particular gun, we only have to mask the one side. On, on this particular holster, we only have to worry about blocking and masking on this one side because the other side is going to be the leather. So this is really simple doing this way. But this is just a little square block, and I use this to block out right here for where we want the belt clip to be. And with this particular style belt clip, there's no adjustment. You can drill some extra holes in the holster to adjust it up and down if you want in this region and use a longer piece of wood. But I just get it set to where I am like it. And I basically hold it on my side with the clip held on this to decide just how far I want, it. I want the uh, belt clip to set so I can get it at least somewhat close to my block of woods in the right spot. But you know, you can just decide that on your own. You can see we got this. So we basically want to get this set where we want it to ride. I just kind of use this to see how high up you want your belt line to be, where you want your belt line on the gun. I'm gonna put my belt line fairly low on it. it. Should give me enough grip there. And just a little. So that's where I'm gonna want mine at, but that's kind of personal preference on how deep you want it to ride in your pants. It's, it's, the deeper it gets, the harder it is to get out. And I just use this regular blue painter's tape. My sews on. And I usually go ahead and mask a little over the trigger guard just to keep it from getting too much retention in there. All 
All right, for the setup we're doing, this is just as far as it has to go, as far as masking goes, this will be good enough. So now, I'm gonna switch the camera over to my oven. You can see there, I just went to Walmart, bought the cheapest toaster oven. I think it was like $18, $19. And what we're gonna do, we'll take our sheet of Kydex, make sure the finish side's up, set it in here, and then turn it on. Turn it on the lowest heat setting, and then just gradually let it work up till you get to about 280, 285, somewhere in there. Somewhere between 280 and 300 is usually where I go. If you get too hot, you'll get a look like, let me see if I can find a piece. This is one I actually got a phone call and forgot about. But you can see in here how it's shiny, and then of course it wrinkled because I left it in there way too long. But it'll get this shiny look to it if you leave it in there too long, so make sure you don't leave it in there too long. But just gradually work it up. Don't set your temperature to 300 and walk away. If you do, you'll end up running the Kydex. So just gradually work it up. Every time it kicks off, just kick it back on and let it just ease up. And I go ahead and take one of my pieces of foam and go ahead and just throw it on top of the oven to get it warming too. So I'll be back whenever this is ready to go and I'll show you what we do with it then. Okay. It's just about ready. One thing I will go ahead and do is go ahead and get this the rest of the way warmed up. Because you want your foam warm, you don't want it cold. Or you put the Kydex against it. And whenever I'm making just a single-sided Kydex to go on a flat surface, I just go ahead and leave the uh, both sheets of foam on top and put it to the plywood on the bottom. Let me check my Kydex again. We're about right. Just a hair bit more. Call that good. Okay, you want to work kind of quickly with this. Set the gun on here. Kind of look at our drawing on here and try to get it somewhat lined up. Doesn't have to be exactly perfect, but let's go ahead and clamp it down. And I really need to go get me some better clamps because those things just aren't that great. They're from Harbor Freight. These ones are pretty good, but they're slower. All right, we'll go ahead and let that cool off. And while that's cooling off, we'll go ahead and switch the cameras back around and we will work on getting the leather started. All right, so we've got that cooling. So we're gonna start with this. This is just a piece of uh, vegetable tan leather. I think it's eight to nine ounce. I'll put a link to it in the description below. We'll get it set on here. And normally I go ahead and mold this first, but due to the fact I already have one, I'm not gonna worry about it. I'm just gonna go ahead and put it on here and get it cut out to size. At least get the basic size of it cut. And some of the tools we're going to use for the leather, this is a, a leather edger. It's a number four, maybe. I'm not sure. I got it from Tandy Leather. I'll look it up and see what size it was for sure. And I'll link to it in the description. And then I've got these tools that are just some cheap ones. Actually, it came with a whole bag. It actually came with some little cheesy leather edgers, too. You can see those in the bag. The file and stuff, but... I just bought that kit off Amazon and I'll link to it too. But this is the edge beveler. And you basically just wet it and then just rub it on it. Or burnisher, sorry, not beveler. This is the beveler. But, uh, and this is just another version of that. And then this is, I don't know, fingernail file is what it looks like to me. But it works pretty good for smoothing the corners and stuff on the leather. But we'll get to all that here in just a minute. I was just going to go ahead and show you that stuff that it's used. And then I'm using, uh, I don't even know how you say this, Fibings leather dye. And I'm going to use a chocolate on this one. 
So I've also got a turquoise and here's the color it kind of turned out. You can see. And then just some little, these little daubers, which they came in that set also off Amazon. You could actually do everything with that one set and not need the better edge beveler or anything. And then I am treating it with just a simple mink oil that you can get at any shoe store or anything. I think that works just as good as anything after I've got it dyed and let it cured out. That's just been the easiest thing for me. I mean, there's a million different ways you can do it, but that's what I do. All right, our stuff should be cool, so let me grab that out of the press and get it back up here and we'll get it drawn out. Okay, go ahead and unmask this. One thing I did forget to mention that I should have mentioned is one of the most important things you can do before you start is make sure your gun is clear. So now we gotta decide how we want this to fit. So basically, And I just do this, kind of freehand it, just kind of how I know how I want it to look. And I always start drawing it a little bigger than what it's actually going to be and just kind of trim it to fit. Should be something basically like that. All right, so now I'm going to go over the saw. We'll get this cut out and kind of sand it a little and get see how it looks and do that. Okay, bear with me. It's going to be a little noisy, but uh, we'll get it cut real quick. Okay, we'll switch over to sander now. And all I'm doing right now is just getting the basic shape of it down. I just smooth it so I don't get too prickly or anything. Now we'll go back over to the leather and work on that. All right, so now we'll see. That fits. And I go ahead and put the rough side in, the smooth side, so the smooth side's against your skin. Go ahead and set it on here and see how that's gonna work. One thing you want to be sure of, you want to make sure you get your, whenever this is where it's going to be, make sure you have plenty of clearance to get your finger up in here. 
You can see I need to take just a little more off there. Let's take the sander and hit that a little more. Now I'm gonna take the heat gun and go ahead and get this pressed back down on the edges. It's kind of curled up a little bit there. Or not, it didn't press as tight as I want it to anyways. So I'm gonna go ahead and just warm it and press it down just a little more. Anytime you're working with a heat gun, just keep it moving. Don't hold it in one spot or you will get it too hot in a hurry. I'll just kind of hold it there for just a second until you get it cooled off. I think. Yeah, we'll run over there and trim this off. Probably just use a sander and sand it off. All right, now we'll take this over the polisher and go ahead and smooth all the edges up real good. Hopefully I keep this where you can see. One thing you want to be sure of when you're using the polishing wheel, if you use one of these, is don't let it grab it and suck it down in there. Or you'll leave a big old mark on the front of your holster and pretty much just ruin the holster. And you got to start all over. Just a word of advice. Okay. So. I'll get this about how we want it. Now, go ahead and just use, this is just a 400 grit sanding block. You can use just 400 grit paper or whatever. The block just makes it a little easier. Go ahead and get all the edges as smooth as you can get them. Feels like we got it pretty good. All 
All right, so now that we got that, we'll go ahead and just trace this out on our leather and go ahead and get it cut good. And at the back, we're gonna come up and make a sweat shield with it, so we'll come up like so. Let get it how I want it. Just want to be careful not to move it, the gun on your leather after you get it started. Okay, go with something about like that. So now, take our scissors. Right in here is where it gets kind of tough to cut with scissors. Sometimes I have to use a utility knife. And yeah, one, two. If I can find my knife. Looks like it's gonna fit about perfect. Once again, we wanna make sure we got plenty of room to get our finger up in here under the trigger. Let me take just a little more out right in here. Gives you a good firing grip on it there. You can come up here and see this. We'll kind of round this off just a little. About like so. Okay, and there's our basic shape of our leather. So now, let's take a little edge beveler. Just run around it. There's plenty of videos on YouTube on finishing leather and edging it and all that. That should be good enough for that. Now, let's take this and a little dauber and just wet a small section of it. Just regular water. Just do a small section at a time. Rub it back and forth. see you get a lot more finished edge there and I'm not gonna make y'all stay and watch this whole process I'll get it done and then I'll be right back okay so we got the edges all burnished and while we're letting that water kind of dry I'll show you kind of how it looks here on the edges and we'll let this dry out a little before we finish it dye it we'll set this back on here 
like so. Now, I'll go back and make sure I got all this trimmed inside of it. After I finish the leather, sometimes it shrinks to where it doesn't fit that good. Which normally I don't final sand this till uh, after I finish the leather. I just did it kind of hurrying things along so it could dry while I was finishing this. And now I'm gonna have to do some of it again, but not a big deal. So I'm gonna run over and I'm not gonna take you with me this time, but I'm just gonna sand these real quick and then I'll be right back. Okay, got that. So we'll just go back over it real quick anywhere where we did it. And should we get all the rough edges? fitting inside here. Now mark where we want our holes and you can either eyeball this and just try to get them lined up where you want them or you can measure it and set them out. Kind of depends on what style holster it is on how I do that. I'm going to measure that one so I get it centered. up here just a little. I'm going to put one in here. Ah. All right, so half. So we're at about three quarters. We'll put one. Next one is this one out just a little farther than that one. Alright, two. One in here. Alright, you can either use a drill press or just a hand drill for this. Well, I'm just drilling one side. I usually just use a hand drill just because it's much faster. Take a little deburring tool. Just kind of smooth them over. Doesn't take much. Okay. We've got that. Let's see just where we want this to ride. The belt to go right about there. Let's go ahead and do a little right about there. Sit on there. 
Find what does my ink pen. Go ahead and trace where these are going to be. And this is just a cheap leather punch. I think I got it off eBay or Amazon. I'll put a link to one in the description below. Just punch them through there real quick. Upside down. All those should line up oh, perfect. All right, so now we will we'll grab a paper towel. We'll go ahead and get this thing dyed or whatever you call it. This stuff will stain your hands if you get it on them, so I recommend being really careful. And the rough side takes quite a bit. Because it'll soak in pretty good on it. Just made a mess. Put it on a little board. And they have tons of different colors of this. And this is the oil based. They have a water based, but I chose to go with the oil based because the guy at Tandy Leather Store told me that this is the pretty much the best stuff you can use for it. And I figure he knows a lot better than me. So I went with them. And it was cheaper too than the water based, I think. Go ahead and get the top part that shows the second coat. Which is good. It's going to look all right. All right, we'll let this sit here and dry for a little while. And then I will be right back. All right, so let this dye get good and dry. 
Now, like I said, there are tons of different top coats you can put on this. But I had a guy, actually the guy at Tandy Leather, said you can use mink oil, it's one of the easiest. I said that's just perfect because I already had some for boots, so. Just don't want to leave it too oily or it'll rub off on you. But this makes it somewhat waterproof, not really, but helps it so if you get any sweat on it or anything. And let this dry for a little bit and then we'll be back. All right, while that's drying, we'll go ahead and put this belt clip on. Find a screw for that. And on this particular holster, I do use Loctite on all the screws. I don't on the regular holsters that I may want to change the belt clips heights on. I never had a problem with them coming loose at all, so hadn't been a concern of mine, so. But on these, I do use Loctite on them just to keep them from ever coming loose. Okay, so now it's had a chance to dry. Okay. Try to get just a drop this time. Well, oh, come on. Go ahead and get all these started. Go back and tighten them. So it would. All right, I'll get all these tightened up. 
and then I'll we'll be just about done. All right, so we've got it all done. Here's what it's gonna look like. I'll put pictures in here of the, on the B-roll of it finished. But as you can see, very comfortable to carry holster. Nice smooth edges. Easy to draw from. So thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like button. Any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments and make sure you all subscribe to see more videos like this. Thanks.